We're going to take our derivatives one step further to now look at concavity and the second derivative test. So we're already very familiar with intervals of increasing and decreasing, and the first derivative test helping us to determine critical values and min and max. Now we want to look at the second derivative test which, which talks about concavity. So we have three functions. Determine intervals on which a function is concave up or down. Find any points of inflection which are like critical values but second derivatives instead. And then apply the second derivative test to find the relative extrema. So far we have looked at the derivative and how to determine where the original function is increasing or decreasing based on the sign of the first derivative. Now we want to look at concavity, and concavity is a great picture down here to give you a visual, but concavity is where f prime would be increasing or decreasing, which means we would have to look at f double prime, the second derivative, to determine if the first derivative is increasing or decreasing. So it's going to be very similar to the process that we just went through. Um, just keep in mind the difference between concave up and concave down. Obviously concave down is it's sort of curving downward. Concave up makes a cup. So again, to find where our function was increasing, we found the derivative to determine concavity or where the derivative is increasing or decreasing, we need to find our second derivative. So the process that we're going to go through here is similar to the process that we went through to find critical values. The only difference is, instead of finding the first derivative, I'm going to find the second derivative, because that will tell me the behavior of the graph of the first derivative. So what I need to do is basically find the second derivative of my function, follow the same steps I did with my first derivative, which is plug in a value, a test point, see if it's greater than zero or less than zero, and if my test point is greater than zero, positive, then it's concave up. And if my test point results in a negative value, then it's concave down. So let's take a look at the whole process start to finish. What I want to do here is to find my first and second derivative because I'll really, both of them are important. If I'm just looking at concavity, I really need the second derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my original function. And notice what I did, and I could have done this differently, I could have kept this as a quotient, but I chose to rewrite my original function to look like this. And then I found the first derivative, and I uh, purposely gave you a harder question to go through with you, because the one I'm going to have you do on your own, it's easier to find the derivative. But for this guy, again, I'm just taking the negative 1 times x plus 3 to the negative 2, so 1 less than this, times the derivative of the inside, that's that chain rule, and then I kept my constant out front. All said and done, my first derivative was negative 12x, and then x squared plus 3 to the negative 2. Then I had to, and that's my final answer for my first derivative. So f of x is equal to that. Then I had to find the second derivative, which is just the derivative of the first derivative. So I'm basically deriving this function, and this is a product rule question because I have an x here, I can't just take the 12 out. So it's first times the derivative of the second, again use the chain rule, plus second times the derivative of the first, simplify what I can, and notice my final answer, I've put it back into the correct format, I didn't write it like this. So here's my first derivative, and here's my second derivative. So really all of our hard work is done. We've already found the first derivative and the second derivative. To determine the intervals of concavity, I need to find where my second derivative, which I've rewritten for you here, is either equal to zero or undefined the same way we did with the first derivative when we were finding the critical values. Now I'm doing it to find possible points of inflection. So again, if I set my numerator equal to zero, I find plus or minus one would make that zero. So those are critical values where obviously it's defined. If I set my denominator equal to zero, 
I find that there is no value that I could plug in there to make it zero. And so f prime of x is everywhere defined. So really, I just have my two critical values. Just as I did before, I'm going to create intervals using those critical values, and that's going to tell me concavity. So again, notice what I did is I took my entire domain, negative infinity to infinity, split it up into regions based on my possible points of inflection. I found a test point, and again, I don't need to see this I just need to see the plus minus. And again, if I end up with a plus, a positive, something greater than zero, that's concave up. If I end up with a value less than zero, negative, it's concave down. And so you can see I've come up with my intervals of concavity. It's concave up from negative infinity to negative one and from one to infinity and concave down from negative one to one. So keep in mind, just as we did for our first derivative, we can use our second derivative to check our work. Remember, my points were negative 1 and 1. And if I look at the graph in each of those regions, it does very clearly look as though this is concave up. And at this point of inflection, it's concave down. And then from this point of inflection, it is now concave up again. So I didn't graph this one live for you, but you get the idea. This is the function I entered. This is the scale that I used. You wouldn't have to use my scale. I just zoomed in enough so that you could see exactly what was happening on my graph. Again, here is one for you to try. I would like you to try this one all by yourself. Again, as promised, I gave you a much easier one to find the derivative of. So find the first derivative and then the second derivative find those intervals, determine the test points and the signs so that you can decide which intervals are concave up and which are concave down. When you are ready and have done as much as you're able to do, press play to check your work. So again, this is a polynomial, so it's continuous and differentiable. Always good to check that first. Then I'm going to find the derivative, so f prime of x or y prime I wrote. Um, the first derivative is 16x cubed minus 24. Second derivative, 48x squared minus 24. And now I have to go about finding those possible points of inflection. So the possible points of inflection are where this function is equal to zero, which is what I did here, or where it's undefined. And I can see very clearly that it's not going to be undefined anywhere because it's a quadratic. So I'm just gonna solve by dividing each side by 24 adding one to each side, so I kind of did two steps in one, dividing by two, taking the square root. So remember, when I take the square root of each side here, I get x equals plus or minus radical one over radical two. I can't have a radical two on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply by radical two, which gives me radical two over two. That's where that came from, still plus or minus. Again, then I create my intervals. So negative infinity to negative radical two, negative to positive radical two over two, and then positive radical two over two to infinity. Make up some point that's between those two values and plug it back in to F double prime, this guy, to determine positive or negative. And I determined concave up, concave down, concave up, and this is my final solution.